Welcome to how to set up and operate the Beofang UV5R transceiver. This is a tutorial for newcomers to ham radio, scanning, and transceivers. This is part 14, a do-it-yourself car mount, the chirp channel names, and a squelch maneuver. First, a do-it-yourself car mount. This is my DIY car mount. It easily clips to the vent. I don't plan on transmitting while I drive. The radio will be monitoring for traffic, and if I need to transmit, I'll pull over and stop. The white wire is a tiger tail, sometimes called a rat tail or counterpoise. It's about 19 inches long with a loop that connects to the base of the antenna. It provides a ground connection for the an antenna that is normally provided by the walkie-talkie operator's hand. I found that the counterpoise does improve reception. I've experimented first with the counterpoise removed by tuning to an active frequency, then increasing the squelch filter until the signal becomes too noisy or unreadable. Then without adjusting the squelch, I connect the counterpoise. With the counterpoise, the signal usually improves less noise and more clarity. Here's the mount with the radio removed. It's made with a couple of medium-sized binder clips with a mini carabiner key ring. The key ring is tied to the binder clip with a short length of string. The blue-green cloth is my face mask looped over the top of the binder clip to cushion the radio, reducing some of the vibration noise. Here, I've flipped the key ring up out of the way. The lower binder clip, the blue one, is placed first on the vent louver, the lowest vent louver. It helps stabilize the vents in a flat horizontal alignment. Without that lower binder clip, the louvers tend to slant downward slightly, allowing the mount to slip if the road conditions are rough. The upper binder clip, the green one, is placed on the center louver, which has a molded grip, allowing a secure grip for the clip. The key ring is tied to the upper wire tab of that upper green clip. The key ring is wide enough to allow the belt clip of my radio to slip over. Here may be seen that first lower blue clip placed on the lowest vent louver. From a slightly higher perspective, the radio is hanging from the key ring, which is attached to the upper binder clip, which is attached to the center vent louver which is being stabilized by the lower binder clip. And for a soft rattle-free cushion, the radio rests gently on my BAE FM, my Beyond All Expectations face mask. Next, chirp channel names. Chirp is a radio programming application free to download, worth donating to, that allows programming the Beofang UV5R, as well as many other models and makes of radios, using a computer. The UV5R has several features that are only programmable with Chirp. One useful feature is channel names. The best place to start with Chirp is the developer's website. There are many tutorials available to learn how to use Chirp, depending upon your make and model of radio, as well as your computer's make and model. Chirp is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Using Chirp, I created a name for each channel stored in my radio's memory. Then I used menu items 21 and 22 on my radio to designate display line A to show the frequency and display line B to show the channel name. Menu item 21 configures display line A. Menu number 22 displays line B. On either of these lines, you can set them to show the frequency, show the channel number, or the channel name. But the channel name requires programming using Chirp. Here's the result. I've selected channel 1 for both display lines. Display line B is selected for monitoring and transmission, as indicated by the triangle to the left of that display line. 
frequency 145.130, I've assigned the name of WA7FDR, which is the call sign that I got off of repeaterbook.com. Now I've selected display line A as my focus, again indicated by the triangle. Press and hold the scan key to begin scanning through the channels using the selected display line, display line A. Since display line A is selected as the active display, only that display line begins the scan operation. Notice that the lower display line does not scan. It remains locked on channel 1, showing just the channel name, WA7FDR. If a signal is detected, the scanning operation will halt, stopping on the active signal. In this case, the active signal was detected on channel 12, 147.320 MHz. Now, the label seen on the lower display line does not now match the channel displayed on the upper line. The scanning operation feature on the UV5R allows only one display line at a time to be scanning. In this case, I've selected display line A as the active display, so the scanning operation was active only on display line A. So how does naming a channel help? If I need to know the channel name for channel 32, I can simply select display line B, scroll to channel 32, and match both display lines. Next, a squelch maneuver. Earlier, I mentioned my adjusting the squelch filter as a way of determining the effectiveness of a tiger tail or antenna counterpoise. Here's a bit more information about that, and it also is helped by programming with Chirp. Chirp unlocks improved squelch filter settings for the UV5R. The original squelch filter is not effective at all. It makes the squelch filter the squelch level of 1 not much different than a squelch level of 9. However, Chirp allows the UV5R to gain a great improvement in squelch levels. Quote, the factory's internal squelch level settings have long been known to have little or no impact on the actual squelch range. The smallest noise burst would easily open the squelch regardless of setting 1 through 9. Until now, it was one of those little quirks you just needed to tolerate, but no longer. Through the efforts of Jim KC9HI and the Chirp development team, this has become a thing of the past. A new, quote, service settings tab has been added to Chirp, which allows you to alter the range of squelch settings. Tom, KD0WOV, did a series of tests with a commercial service monitor and developed a preferred settings chart, which will work with any of the UV5R or UV82 series. These settings will vary your squelch sensitivity to provide a smooth transition where a weak signal can open level 1 and only a monster big signal can open level 9. That's from Miklor. Dot com. And www.miclore is the place to start. Notice the caution. This is not compatible with UV B5 or B6 or the BF888S models due to differences in firmware. So using Chirp, I program my UV5R to use the following values for the squelch filter. Now, with my felt squelch filter settings modified and improved by the use of Chirp, I can determine the effectiveness of the antenna counterpoise modification. First, make an antenna counterpoise, a tiger tail or a rat tail. Second, scan for an active frequency or channel on your radio without attaching the counterpoise yet. While listening to that active frequency, number three, gradually increase the squelch until the signal becomes unreadable or excessively noisy. 
and then attach the antenna counterpoise and see if the signal improves. On the Beofeng UV5R, adjusting the squelch levels is taken care of with menu item 00, which is abbreviated SQL. The default level when you reset your radio or first get it out of the box is set to a squelch level of 5. A squelch level of 0 has no squelch filtering. All signals come through, whether they're weak or strong, and in fact, all you'll hear unless there's a transmission is just white noise. A, a squelch se setting of 9 is full squelch. It would take a strong, a high-powered or very nearby station to open the squelch filter and allow you to hear the traffic using a setting of 9. There is a potential problem. I've called it the key beep bug. Quote, there is a bug in some versions of Baofeng firmware where if you turn off the key beep, now that's not the same as the Roger beep. If you turn off the key beep, the receiver will never open squelch. Doesn't matter whether you change the setting in chirp or change it from the keypad. The simple fix is to simply turn the key beep back on. You can do that from Chirp or from the keypad, and the radio will work again. That's from radioreference.com. Finally, some links to get you started in making your own antenna counterpoise. Thank you. This has been How to Set Up and Operate the Baofeng UV5R Transceiver. All the episodes of this video tutorial series may be found on my YouTube channel. I'm Milt Reynolds, KJ7PPX, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. 73.